Alrighty then, welcome back to the big board. Not sure when I'm going to publish this, but it's July 3rd. And I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm taking the plunge here with Brazen Chariots. I'm going to look at the Battle Axe scenario. Uh, not because it is uh, anything special, just that it seemed to be the first one I saw that was one map. And I had read a little bit about the battle, which doesn't mean very much because it was a long time ago. Uh, but uh, I thought, given some of the challenges that are faced by both forces here, uh, it would be interesting to see how that might play out using the BCS system. So, excuse me. So, uh, <clears throat> let's see where we want to start here. I guess historically, you know, the background here is pretty interesting. It's a kind of a pivotal point in World War II, which of course there were many, but around the May June time frame. Uh, there were a number of setbacks for the Allies. Uh, there was the, inva uh, the invasion of Crete. There was uh, the fall of Greece, I believe. Uh, Operation Brevity had failed uh, in terms of the relief of Tobruk. And uh, Tobruk was besieged. Uh, Rommel had ignored his orders and decided to take his two divisions and uh, was now the renamed DAC, uh, Dutch, Dutch, <laughs> uh, the Deutsche Ar Ar Army Africa, right? And uh, well, whatever it was, it doesn't matter. And uh, take the Italians and basically regain all the uh, terrain that had been lost to the uh, Allies uh, in Operation Compass. One of the biggest issues he had was that uh, by ignoring those orders, he had put himself in a situation where he had, in essence, more than outstripped his supply. I think I was reading somewhere that it was going to take... Uh, let me see if I, I wrote it down. I don't think I did. <clears throat> Some amazing amount of tonnage of fuel. Uh, let me see if I can find it for you real quick here. No, I can't. Dang it. I hate it when that happens. But let's just say that it was a lot. And uh, that even, so in combat conditions, it was twice as much as a lot, which is an even larger amount. Here we go. 1,400 tons a day in battle, 700 tons a day in non-battle conditions, non-combat uh, uh, conditions. So that's a lot of fuel to move from Italy to the coast of Africa. The Italians said they could do it, they couldn't, and hence the importance of the of Tobruk being uh, taken. And it was not as easy for uh, Rommel as he had hoped it would be for him to capture uh, uh, Tobruk. Meanwhile, in the background, Hitler's planning uh, Operation Barbarossa, and there's a, uh, a desire not to overinvest in what is basically, or or in, in their minds anyway, strategically unimportant, a secondary, a secondary strategic imperative. Uh, the African front was not going to change the war as far as Hitler and his command staff were concerned, which, you know, arguably, if we wanted to have a longer conversation about that, we could, and it would be pretty interesting. And I'd love to... Uh, I guess, explore the ideas around what if, what if Rommel could have been successful, was reinforced, did get the fuel and supplies he needed, uh, and if they were able to control Malta and uh, secure their supply lines, would that have changed the war significantly? Would it have opened up a second front for Operation Barbarossa, potentially? Would it have uh, 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 choked off the supply lines for the British? Uh, a, for uh, reinforcements, everything would have had to come around Cape Town now. So all the Indians, uh, the New Zealanders, and of course the Aussies would have all come had to come around the Cape. Uh, and that would have uh, slowed down the, ca the capacity of the the uh, allies to the Commonwealth forces to be, you know, co-joined and reinforced. They would have been able to capture the 
uh, oil fields that were avail available in Syria, Palestine area. And I think that may have been, you know, that would have then forced Turkey's hand potentially. So there's a lot of interesting things that could have happened there. They didn't. So not relevant to any of this, but it's interesting that this battle really was one of the turning points for the Germans where if things had have not gone well now, you know, maybe the maybe they would have abandoned Africa uh, as far as the Germans were concerned and uh, taken those two divisions and put them into the Eastern Front, which no doubt they would have been chewed up like everybody else was eventually. But uh, it may have then, uh, maybe that would have delayed the Americans' involvement in the war. They would have seen uh, the, the tide turn a little bit. So all sorts of things could have come out of this. Uh, as it was, uh, with the uh, British loss here and uh, Wavell's uh, uh, commander's poor performance, I don't think I would uh, uh, put it against Wavell to uh, say that it was his fault per se. But certainly a lack of planning, <clears throat> an overconfidence in the uh, new equipment that was being shipped to them, uh, lack of training, lots of issues that went into this, clearly a poor understanding of combined arms, even in 1941. After all the lessons of World War I, after the lessons of 39, the, the, uh, the Commonwealth has really not done a good job yet of understanding the the dynamic nature of armor, how to use it with artillery, how to use it with infantry, and how to uh, coordinate their forces. Uh, they were severely lacking in radios and a lot of these uh, these pieces of equipment that were on the on the ground here, and they were uh, unable to coordinate themselves effectively. And they also had all sorts of uh, armament issues as well. So a really challenging situation for the British. They were uh, arguably had slower tanks to, in some degree, uh, maybe sometimes better armored like the Matildas. <clears throat> they were undergunned. Their uh, AT guns were undergunned unless they put the 25 pounders down. But they were usually kept separate as a supporting force. So they... They just didn't yet grok how to pull together an effective attack. So with this scenario, we're going to have the opportunity to explore that a little bit and see, you know, can, can Hellfire Pass here be attacked from two sides uh, using this formation here, the Indians and uh, some elements here from 7th Brigade and uh, 22nd uh, Guard. And can we uh, work out how we can take control of this area and then look for the opportunity to push further on to, uh, to Brook, which is the idea here. And, and the key to uh, the, uh, the Commonwealth situation here is clearly clearing this this section here, clearing Hellfire Pass here so that they can then take Solemn and then have a clear supply line moving on and through up into Tobruk so that they can try and uh, relieve the siege. So these forces over here, the 7th Armoured and the 22nd Guard and the 4th Armoured Brigade, uh, all of this business here, uh, they were tasked with uh, capturing Point 206, which is right here. Capturing Fort Capuzzo here. And I'm wondering why there's not a unit there, but I'll have to check that. that sh there should be a unit there. And uh, Harford Ridge is over here somewhere. Yabir yeah, Harford is here. And this was another objective of the exercise, all to be completed in the first day. Uh, the Indians and elements from this, uh, from the escarpment side of of the attack, were to uh, close in on Kampf Group Bark and give them what for, right? And really drive in on them and clear this pass. Now, of course, the the Germans had a little bit of an inkling of what was going on. They actually got uh, early warning about the attack coming because of the code words that were transmitted uh, early in the morning at 6 a.m. 
but they ha they already had well entrenched 88s with a range of uh, four, no less, and uh, some other forces in here, as well as uh, bits you know other bits and pieces and some minefields. You know they're all in prepared defense, and so they were in a pretty good situation here and fully expecting this assault that was about to come. Uh, the, the this uh, while this is a tough unit over here you know it's four rated you know it's not um, it's it's not a situation where I I think they're gonna hold very well but we'll see what happens and then of course the, this flanking maneuver that's supposed to occur to take uh, Hafid Probably not going to get represented very well in this battle. Uh, this is a multi-ridge system here. There were three ridges, and uh, the, the the forces that advanced, Seventh uh, Armored uh, Brigade forces that advanced up here, uh, thought they had cleared the first ridge, and indeed they did, and then uh, advanced upon the second and took an absolute shellacking, and then uh, they then moved around a flank, uh, started clearing the the ridge again uh, but then reinforcements arrived and they were pushed off and had to retreat and then the whole disparity of range uh, uh, the capabilities of an effective range all came into play with the uh, commonwealth forces having the uh, you know, really need, needing to be within 500 yards to be effective and the germans having up to 2000 uh, yards or meters of uh, of reach right of effective fire uh, and also using uh, the Rommel tactics of feigning a withdrawal and drawing the the Commonwealth forces into a trap with AT guards and whatnot so there's a lot going on here we'll see how this game represents it I'm going to suspect that because we have this hindsight going on Things may not work out quite as we expect, but we're going to try and have some fun with it anyway. So I thought this would be a nice little introduction. I know that kind of rambled on a little bit there, but we're all set up and ready to roll, and we'll see what happens, and we'll take it all from there. Look forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks for uh, watching, and uh, click the like, subscribe, do all that sort of fun stuff, share with a friend. Uh, maybe not this video, maybe something else that's a little more uh, compelling, right? Uh, we'll get some action gameplay going on, in uh, the next couple of videos, I'll try and walk through some bits and pieces of activations, not as tutorials, but just to show you the flavor of the game. And we'll, we'll deal with any errors and, and omissions as we go through it. Uh, just try and be nice and try and be polite when you're offering your comments up. Thanks so much. Bye.